the far term, we have to realize that as robots become more, uh, more sophisticated, more intelligent, there is a chance that they could become very, very superior to us, in which case we should think about merging with them. Now this, of course, will be done democratically. People will choose if they want to merge with robots. This is not going to be forced on people. Now it sounds unpleasant to some people because they have this vision of having implants dangling from their head, looking like some uh, monster robot from a science fiction movie. They realize that these so-called implants could be microscopic. They, with nanotechnology, we may be able to enhance the power of the mind and the brain in a way that is basically invisible. You wouldn't be able to tell if a person has been enhanced this way or not. Well, the holy grail of nanotechnology is the replicator. That is, you simply ask for something and the device changes whatever you put into it into what you want. This is straight out of Star Trek. Now, some people said that, well, the key to a replicator is a nanobot. That is a microscopic robot that you can't even see that cuts atoms apart, that cuts molecules, rearranges molecules. So you take a glass and you change it into a dish and you take a bunch of dishes and you turn it into a table. That's the power of a magician. Now, is that even physically possible? Some people said it's too much. It's asking too much of a nanobot. But you see, nanobots already exist in one form. Mother Nature has already created a nanobot. Mother Nature can take a bunch of hamburgers and french fries and turn it into a baby in nine months. That is amazing. How do you do that? How does Mother Nature turn hamburgers into a baby in nine months? By ribosomes, which cut apart DNA and protein molecules at precise points and rearrange them. That is a miracle. A molecule, a molecule that takes apart hamburgers one by one and creates a baby in nine months. So it is possible, though of course to re-engineer it would take a technology far beyond anything that we have at the present time. Now, some people think that a nanobot is going to look like something right out of a construction site. It's going to have tongs, it's going to have a welding thing, it's going to have clippers, and it's going to look like something that you would imagine from a Lego set. Well, there are criticisms of that, because at the atomic scale, quantum effects start to come into play. And quantum mechanics says that there's uncertainty. You don't really know precisely the location of an atom. And so this object that we visualize in our mind, a nanobot with clippers and with blow torches and with the ability to cut molecules at a precise point, that's not possible. We have something called the Casimir effect. Quantum effects that as you get close to molecules, they are repelled and they come toward you. So this is the sticky fat fingers problem. <laughs> that if you have a nanobot with clippers cutting DNA at certain points, the hands are actually rather sticky because of the Casimir effect. And they are like, uh, like gloves. They're not very precise. Now, I believe that it is possible, but it's a technology that is still far more advanced than what we have at the present time. Mother Nature does it, but look, Mother Nature has had three and a half billion years to play with things like nanobots. We've only done this for a few decades. So, you know, give us a break. It's gonna take time. So don't expect replicators anytime soon. I think they are probably possible within the laws of physics, but it'll take many long decades before we can create a nanobot. Well, first we have to understand the past. Take a look at civilization hundreds of years ago. Uh, back in the 1700s, what was long distance communication in the 1700s? Long distance, a long distance communication was yelling out the window. That's how people communicated, by yelling at each other. What was high speed travel in the 1700s? Getting stuck in the mud with a wagon, if you could even afford a wagon. But what happened? We physicists worked out something called thermodynamics. We could calculate how much energy you can extract from a lump of coal. And that created the Industrial Revolution. Steam engines 
allowed us to create locomotives, which allowed us to replace human labor and sail across continents in a matter of days. This was unimaginable during feudal times. So in the 1800s, we had the steam revolution, the industrial revolution. In the 1900s, we physicists began to harness electricity and magnetism. That electrified whole continents, giving us the electric age. And then in the last 50 years, we physicists worked out transistors and lasers, giving us high technology to space program, iPods, iPads, telecommunications, the internet, GPS, all of that coming from quantum physics. So we've had three waves of innovation, steam power, electricity and magnetism, and high technology. Now, what is the fourth wave? This is the big question, what will dominate the rest of the 21st century. I think it's going to be a combination of molecular physics, that is, nanotechnology, that is the physics of molecules used in manufacturing at the molecular level, biotechnology, where we have quantum mechanics govern the motions of DNA, which controls life, and then artificial intelligence, because now we're reducing the circuitry of the brain down to neurons. And so I think these three molecular technologies will propel us into the future.